and Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-8940. Back at Wasi. I'm getting ready for the National Anthem. Indians taking the field. We'll set the lineups again for those of you just joining us. We're a little bit late here getting started. But it's a beautiful day for baseball here at Wasi High School. of our national anthem here at Wauseon High School. We're over here twice this season for basketball, once for the boys and once for the girls. And this coming fall, I do believe, we're back here. No, actually, I think I think that the Rams took Wauseon off the football schedule, so I don't, well, or vice versa. Not sure what happened there, but I don't think that the teams will meet this upcoming season on the gridiron. Looking at the defense for the Wauseon Indians, Keaton Hartsock is on the mound. So Hartsock, the right-hander, senior right-hander, will take the ball for Coach Thomas. Behind the plate, Tyson Rodriguez. First base, Jude Armstrong. Ryan Marks is at second base for the Indians. Shortstop is Braylon Miller. Cage Little is at third. Kale Albright is in left field for the Indians who come in at 7-9-1, and one, one tie versus Napoleon. Eli Delgado is in center field. Mason Thomas is in right field for Coach Thomas. For the Rams, Aiden Mosier will be leading it off. Mosier, Caden Radzik, and Dalton Wolfram will be the first three hitters to face Keaton Hartsock. Suddenly, David Frank Weather. Beautiful day for baseball. Couldn't ask for her. Probably one of the best, probably the best overall weather days that we've had. Slight wind blowing in from center field. 70 degrees on your David Frank Weather forecast here at Wauseon High School. Bridget, thank you. I'm going to bring home a win. Said the tournament draw was Sunday. The Rams with those back-to-back huge wins over the Friday and Saturday. Defeated Columbus Grove on Friday. Columbus Grove was 10th in the state. Then he came back and shut out Patrick Henry, who was 18th in the state. 18th in the state. And the Rams wound up getting the number one seed in the district. And I was going to make a post, which I will probably will do sometime in the next week or so, but if there's not a coach in the area that deserved coach of the year more than the Rams magician over there, Brent Renouette, because if you were to ask anybody, including the players and coaches, if at this point of the season they'd be 14-4 and four and they just had the number one seed in the district, 
they probably would have locked you up for the summer and you wouldn't have, or the spring and you wouldn't have saw any baseball. They would have called you nuts. So if there's a coach of the year in the Crescent News that's not Coach Renolette this year, that's a shame because this man has worked his magic this year to get this team at 14-4. and four. Leading off is Aiden Mosier, 308 for Mosier. First pitch by Hartsock. Strike call. We are underway here at Wauseon High School. 70 degrees on your David Franck weather forecast. First pitch is 511. Hartsock 0 1 pitch to Mosier. Swung on little blooper over the third baseman's head and foul territory. I mean, Chase was Little, Miller, and Albright, kind of a little Bermuda Triangle there, fall, fell right in the middle of all of them in foul territory. No balls and two strikes to the Rams left fielder, Aiden Mosier. <laughs> Not going to hear Ned or Coach Rudder today. Here at Wasi, <laughs> like we normally do. <laughs> oh, pick two pitch to Mosier. Swung on, little soft fly ball into left field. Nice running catch by Cale Albright to put away Mosier for the first out. Like a might fall in. Mosier got a nice, or Mosier. Albright got a nice jump to retire Mosier. F7 on the put out. That's the first out. Caden Radzik steps in. 4 100 for Radzik. 21 runs batted in. Caden will be on the mound for the Rams here. First pitch to Caden, outside corner, strike called. Said May 19th, the Rams will host the winner of Ottawa Hills and Delta. That sounds familiar, the Rams lost to Ottawa Hills last year in the district finals at Defiance High School. Pitch is outside, strike two called. That was a heck of a game. Rams defeated the previous state champions or state runner-ups, Archibald Blue Streaks, and lost to Ottawa Hills, the Green Bears, last year. 0-2 pitch to Radzik. He fouls it back. One ball and two strikes just underway here. A little bit late starting. Here at Wasion. No score on a beautiful Tuesday over at Wasion High School. 0-2 pitch to Radzik. Fouls it. Third base side foul by the Indians dugout. Wasion on the third base side, Tenor on the first base side. Keaton Hartsock pitches exclusively from the stretch. First, or the 0 2 pitches up and in. Ball one to Caden Radzik. One ball, two strikes to Radzik. Digs in from the right side of the plate. Pitch line right back through the middle into center field for a base hit. Braden Miller gave it a nice try. Just couldn't get the glove on it. Radzik's on at first base with a one-out single. Going to bring up Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram, 393. 19 runs batted in and a more impressive 15 stolen bases for Dalton. Just been a demon on the base pass the last two weeks for the Rams. Radzik leads away from first. Pitch to Hart by Hart Sox outside. Ball one. Caden's got 12 steals on the season himself. Decent lead by Radzik at first. Hart Sox comes set. There goes Radzik. Pitches a ball. Throw down. Not in time. Radzik's in with a stolen base. Stolen base number 13 for Radzik on the season. Wolfram's got a runner in scoring position. Can tie Caden or get, with, get within one of Caden for the team RBI lead. Caden's got 21. Dalton with 19. 2 0 pitch coming to Wolfram from Hartsock. That stays high. Three balls and no strikes to Dalton Wolfram. Taron Ward awaits on deck for Tenora. Three zero pitch inside corner strike one called. Oh, 
Radzik on at second. One out. Just underway here. Tyson Rodriguez asks for time. Goes out and has a conversation with Hartsock. Runner a second. Radzik, they may want to change a sign up or two. <laughs> Wolfram looks down at Coach Runnelette. Steps back in. Keaton Hartsock. Long look in. Gets the sign from Tyson Rodriguez. Looks back at Radzik. 3-1 pitch coming to Wolfram. He steps off. Radzik scampers back to second base standing. Rams back in action. The rest of their games are at home, I do believe. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, three straight home games. Pitch to Wolfram. Ball four, up and in. Wolfram draws a one-out walk. So Dalton's on at first. Radzik is on at second. It's going to bring up Rams third baseman, Taryn Ward. Ward in the cleanup spot. 321 with 13 runs batted in for Taryn. Hartsot looks back at Radzik at second. Big lead there for Radzik. Pitch to Taryn Ward as a strike. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here on Toronto Rams Live on this beautiful Tuesday. Runners lead from first and second. Top of the first inning, no score here at Wasion. Hartsot looks back at Radzik, steps off again. Senior Taryn Ward digs in, bats from the right side. Hartsock looks back at Radzik at second. Big lead by Radzik. Hartsock looks back again. Come set, pitch to Ward. Inside, nice stop by Tyson Rodriguez. One ball and one strike to Taryn Ward. One out here in the top of the first. Rams in the All Blacks. All jerseys, gray pants. Wasian in the home whites. 1-1 one, one pitch to Ward. There goes Radzik. Rodriguez throw down to third base. Not in time. Throw goes into left field. Radzik gets up. He's going to plate the Rams' first run. Rams on top. 1-0. Radzik, a huge jump from third base. Wolfram goes down to second base on a throwing error. Rodriguez had a nice pitch. Popped out. Three down to third. Throw was just a little bit low. Got by Little down there. Went into left field. One ball and two strike count to Taryn Ward. Dalton Wolfram now leads from second. Hard sock with the sign. Come set. Pitch. Ward smashes it right back through the box. Nice play by second baseman Ryan March. He throws it away. Unfortunately, that's going to allow Dalton Wolfram to score. And Taryn Ward winds up at second base on the air. Rams on top, 2 nothing. Marks fielded it. Throw just went awry. E4 puts Ward at second, and the Rams with a 2 nothing lead here early on. Luke Harris steps in, 321 for Luke. Luke playing shortstop here this afternoon with Radzik on the mound. Hard Sox pitch. Ball just misses the outside corner. Harris has 10 runs batted in on the season. Ward down to second has just two steals this year. Hartsock comes set. 1-0 pitch to Harris. Strike call. Hit the outside corner. Down evens at 1-1. One, one. one out here in the top of the first. Ward at second. Rams have played a two. And have a early 2 nothing lead over the Wasion Indians. Long look in by Keaton Hartsock. Gets the sign from Rodriguez. Comes set. Looks back at Ward. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Harris. Up and away. Two balls and one strike. Nice crowd over here at Wasion High School. Some of the family members brought their lawn chairs. Setting, soaking up the beautiful sunshine over here. 2-1 pitch to Harris. Swings and skies it on the infield. Drifted into foul territory. Now back into fair territory. Cage Little has the ball hit off the tip of his glove. 
for us. Another error for the Indians. That one's going to be E5 on at first base. Now as Luke Harris Ward had to stay at second. High pop originally started in foul territory. The wind pushed it foul. Then the spin kind of brought it back just inside the foul line at third base. Gage Little was underneath it, and just with the wind bringing the spin, actually, the spin of the ball bringing it back towards the infield, hit off the tip of his glove. Hunter Bosselman is going to step in. Bosselman will be behind the plate for the Rams. 275 for Hunter, 13 runs batted in. Hunter probably raised his average about 100 points in the last two weeks. And one of the hotter Rams at the plate, him and Dalton Wolfram and Caden Radzik, those three. We're not in that conference. <laughs> Two nothing Rams, top of the first inning. They have runners at first and second. Keaton Hartsock looks back at Ward at second. Comes set, pitch to Bosselman is a ball. Lady Rams will be at home this Friday, sectional versus Swatton, who they just played Saturday. So it's kind of a, a replay. Lady Rams rained out last night at Wayne Trace. 1-0 pitch coming to Bosselman. Check swing. Pitch stays inside. Two balls and no strikes. Area teams just basically their conference season is complete. They're getting ready for the tournament. Tournament tune-up games here the next week and a half. 2-0 pitch to Bosselman. That one stays outside. Three balls and no strikes. On deck for the Rams is Eli Plasman. Set the Indians defense for those of you just joining us here after this pitch. Keaton Hartsock is on the mound. Gets the sign. Comes set. 3-0 pitch to Bosselman. Way outside ball four. That's going to load him up. Ward goes down to third. Harris goes down to second. And Bosselman... Trots down the first. Behind the place, Tyson Rodriguez. Dude right, Armstrong at first. Ryan Marks is at second. Brady Miller is at short. Gage Little is at third. Albright's in left. Delgado in center. And Mason Thomas is in right. DH is Caden Clymer. He's hitting for Gage Little. Bases full of Rams. One out. Plasman steps in. First pitch to Eli is a strike. Eli comes in at 318 with six runs batted in. Seen more and more plate appearances as the season has progressed. Hart Sox 0-1 to Plasman. Inside leans Eli back. Count evens at 1-1. One and one. one out. Bases full of Rams. They have two runs so far. Two big errors by the Indians this inning. Most of these runs will be unearned. Hart Sox pitch to Plasman up and in. Spins Eli back out of the way. Two balls and a strike for Plasman. The last few batters, Hart Sox had a hard time finding the strike zone. Pitch to Eli, catches the outside corner. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Top of the first inning. Bases full of Rams. Rams have played a two to grab a 2 nothing lead. Hart Sock gets a sign from Rodriguez. Come set. Plasman steps out. Runners on every base for the Rams. One out here. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Plasman. Drills it to left field. Left fielder comes in, has to play it on the bounce. Ward scores. Here comes Harris. Heading to third is Bosselman. He slides in and on the throw down to second goes Eli Plasman. So Plasman with two runs on the single. Scoring was Taryn Ward, and right behind him was Luke Harris. Bosselman hustled all the way over to third. As we said, Plasman went to second on the throw. Connor Wolfram is your DH. Bending in the eighth spot, Connor is hitting for Wimpkin at first base. So Trent will be the Rams' first baseman. Pitches high. 
broken Ball up. one. Connor, 286 with four runs batted in on the season. On deck, the number nine hitter, Grady Gusweiler. Rams up 4 nothing here in the top of the first inning over here at Los Angeles. Hard shot comes set. Pitch to Connor Wolfram inside corner. Strike count evens at one ball and one strike. You can, like, fabricate a fake pair. Right. Hard Sox pitch to Connor. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Out to Connor Wolfram. One ball and two strikes. One out. Rams on second and third. Plasman at second. Hunter Bosselman at third. Four nothing to Nora. As they bat here in the top of inning number one. On, on two pitch to Connor. Swung on and missed. Ball in the dirt. Rodriguez fires down to first base in time to get Wolfram. So... Wolfram struck out. Put out goes 2-3. That's the second out in the inning. We're going to bring up the number nine hitter, Grady Gusweiler. Grady, 3-16 on the season, has seven runs batted in. A very impressive 13 walks. Seven stolen bases for Grady and several highlight reel catch. One of them we actually were got the benefit of having video on. That was over at Kaleida a couple Saturdays ago. and that was like the catch of the year. First pitch from Keaton Hartsock to Gus Weiler catches the outside corner. Strike one. Rants with just two hits this inning. Hartsock's pitch to Grady. Check swing up and in. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Two huge air by the Indians have contributed to the damage. <laughs> Keaton Hartsock gets the sign. 1-1 one, one pitch to Gus Weiler. It's low. Two balls and a strike. And one thing about Grady here lately as well, last two or three weeks for Grady, very patient at the plate. In a course of two games where I think he walked four or five straight plate appearances. So is Gary. 2-1 pitch to Gus Weiler. Swung on, taps it second base side. Marks up with it, throws over to first base in time to get Gus Weiler for the third out. The Rams do some damage in the first. They get four runs. They do so on just two hits, two big errors, and two left on after a half inning of play over here at Wauseon High School. It is your Tenora Rams four, and the Wauseon Indians, they're coming to bat. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call 419-784-9880 or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say go Rams. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back here at Wauseon High School, the Rams with a 4-0 lead before the Indians have a chance to bat. Looking at the Rams defensively, on the mound is Caden Radzik. Record is 1-0. Pitched seven and two-thirds innings. He's allowed five runs, five earned runs. He's walked five, struck out three. Has an ERA of 4.55. Last time we saw Caden was weeks ago. That was over at Fairview where he got to start against the Apaches. Behind the plate is Hunter Bossel. And at first base is Trent Wimpkin for the Rams. The second base, Eli Plasman. Shortstop today is Luke Harris. Taron Ward is at third. Rams outfield will be Aiden Mosier in left. Grady Gusweiler in center. And Dalton Wolfram will be in right field. For the host, the Wasan Indians, Jude Armstrong is leading off. Batting second is Eli Delgado. Batting third, Tyson Rodriguez. Batting fourth is Caden Clymer. Climber will be dh for Cage Little. Batting fifth is Ryan Marks. Marks is at second base. Sixth, Mason Thomas in right field. Seventh, Keaton Hartsock. Hartsock is on the mound. Batting eighth is Braylon Miller. Miller is the shortstop. And batting ninth 
is Kale Albright. He is in left field for the Wauseon Indians. About a month away from the mound for Radzik. So, see what Caden Bram's pitching has just been fantastic the last three weeks. Team ERA coming in is 2.08. Jude Armstrong steps in, bats from the right side of the plate. First pitch by Radzik. Strike on the inside corner. Senior Armstrong plays at first base. Had 30 steals last season. Radzik gets the sign. Winds it up. 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball. Little blooper into... Right field, Dalton Wolfram fields it. So Armstrong takes it the other way for a opposite field single. He's on at first base and always a threat to go. The speedster, Jude Armstrong. Eli Delgato will step in. Delgato in center field. Decent lead by Armstrong at first. Radzik throws over. Trent Wimpkins slaps a tag on him, but Armstrong is back standing. Radzik from the set. Gets the sign. Pitch to the plate. That pitch stays outside. One ball and no strikes to the center fielder, Eli Delgado. I'll sell the damn thing before I turn the motor on my Radzik looks over at Armstrong at first base. Definitely a threat to go. Radzik fires it. Pitch is swung on and foul tip into the mitt of Hunter Bosselman. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Bottom of the first inning here at Wasihan. Rams lead 4 nothing. Radzik looks over at Armstrong. Comes set. 1-1 one, one pitch coming till Delgado. There goes Armstrong. Pitch is low and away. Throw down not in time. Bosselin had no chance on that. Pitch was low away in the dirt in the left-hander's batter's box. He just kind of tossed it down there. But Armstrong's on with uh, on at second base with a stolen base. Count to Delgado is two balls and one strike. Caden Radzik comes set. 2-1 pitch coming to Delgado. That one's in the dirt. Heads to the backstop. So Armstrong's on at third base on the wild pitch. Just like that, the Indians have a runner in scoring position with nobody out. Three one pitch to Delgado catches the outside corner. Strike two called. Full count to the number two hitter, Eli Delgado, runner at third. Radzik winds it up. 3-2 pitch. Swung on. Hopped into shallow left field. Harris goes out. Late leaps. Can't make the catch. Into second base is Eli Delgado. He gets a RBI double out of that. Little towering pop-up down the left field line. Mosier was coming in. He couldn't get it. Ward could not get it. Harris coming over from a shortstop position all the way to the line. Leaped. Couldn't make the catch. 4-1. Rams lead has been cut to three here in the bottom of the first inning. Tyson Rodriguez steps in. Rodriguez Behind the plate for the Indians. Radzik comes set. Looks back at Delgado at second. Pitch is a little bit low. Nice stop by the Rams backstop today. Hunter Bosselman. Dalt Wolfram getting a break today. He's in right field for Coach Renolette and the Rams. Radzik's 1-0 pitch coming to Tyson Rodriguez. That was you. Up and in. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, no kidding. Like somebody lost the phone down below. <laughs> Fantastic crowd here. Chairs lined all the way around the great, great. My grandpa left field side. Radzik comes set. 
2 0 pitch to Rodriguez is high. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes to Tyson Rodriguez. Caden Climbers on deck. Theo. I'm like, is this Theo's room now? Thank you. Basically. Really really Radzik looks back at Delgado at second. Come set. 3-0 pitch coming to Tyson Rodriguez. Up and in. Yeah. First three Indians have reached. So Rodriguez trots down the first base on the walk. He's going to put Indians at first and second. Still nobody out. Caden Clymer is going to step in. Clymer bats from the left side. <laughs> Junior DHing today for Coach Thomas. First pitch is inside. Ball one. Rams with four in their top of the first inning. The Indians have one already. Threatening to add more with runners at first and second, and nobody out. Radzik's pitch coming to Climber. Strike on the outside corner. Why don't you go work at Fire Lawn instead of Souders? I am going to have to college. Ward even with the bag at third. Gus Weiler shading into right center field. He is for a climber. Rats it comes set. 1 1 pitch way inside. Two balls and one strike. <laughs> Can't say geez, your two one to climber. Long look in, looks back at the runner a second. Comes set. Pitch to the plate. Swung on, fouled off third base side. Out of play. Or the safety net. <laughs> Two balls and two strikes to Caden Clymer. Nobody out. Indians with runners at first and second. Rams with a 4-1 lead here in the bottom of inning number one. Radzik looks at the runners. 2-2 pitch coming to Clymer. Swung on and miss. Handcuffed himself. So Clymer goes down swinging for the first out. That's going to bring up Ryan Marks. Marks going to dig in. Bats from the left side as well. Marks, one of the seniors on the Indians ball club. Radzik comes set. As the runners lead from first and second. First pitch to Marks is inside. Nice stop by Hunter Bosselman. Said that a lot here in the first inning. I thought I hit something. I hit something with the back of my hand, like a window crack. Or a window I didn't realize crack. that. <laughs> 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 Radzik nods yes from and gets a sign, throw back. Back in with the head first dive, back there at second base is Eli Delgado ahead of the throw. Harris slapped a tag on Delgado, but reached in there safely. One ball, no strikes, one out here. Indians at first and second. Ryan Marks is your hitter. Pitch from Radzik is high and away. Two balls and no strikes. Ow! I'm calling. Two zero pitch coming from Radzik to Marks. High ball three. In the first inning, Keaton Hartsock threw 39 pitches. So far here in the bottom part of the inning, Radzik's already at 20 himself. Wimpkin and Plasman come in to have a brief word with Radzik. They head back to their positions. Runners at first and second. One out for the Indians. Count to Ryan Marks. Is three balls and no strikes. Radzik's 3-0. Inside corner, strike one called. Mason Thomas awaits on deck for the Indians. Three-one pitch coming. Two marks. 
just misses. That's going to load him up. Marks heads down to first base. Down to third base goes Eli Delgado to second is Tyson Rodriguez. And Ryan Marks is on at first. That's going to bring up the number six hitter, the right fielder, Mason Thomas, with the bases full of Indians. Razzik's going to work out of the windup with the bases loaded. First pitch catches the outside corner. Strike one called. Rams with a 4-1 lead here in the bottom of the first inning. Mason Thomas is the batter. Razzik nods yes. Come set. Fires up and in. One ball and one strike to Mason Thomas. I need some plastic The junior, Mason Thomas, bats from the right side. Keaton Hartsock awaits on deck for the Indians. Radzik's 1-1 coming to Thomas. Breaking ball stays in. Two balls and one strike. Delgado at third. Rodriguez at second. And Marks at first for the Indians. They've already scored one. Rams still lead 4-1. to one. They're in the everlasting bottom of the first. Radzik's 2-1 pitch. Strike. Called on the inside corner. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. One out. Isn't it under and behind? Really? Wind blowing from right to left. Oh, they have it over there. Maybe a center to left, but right to left occasionally. 2-2 pitch coming to Mason Thomas. Radzik winds it up. Fires outside corner. Strike three call. So Thomas goes down looking for the second out. That's a huge out for the Rams and Caden Radzik. Keaton Hartsock. Hartsock is on the mound. Can help himself here. Bases full of Indians. Two outs now. Rams with a three-run lead. Four to one. Hartsock also bats from the left side. Radzik winds it up. First pitch to Hartsock. Swung on hit right back to Radzik. Off his glove. He recovers it. In time on the throw to first base. One hopper from Hartsock. Hit off Radzik glove. Rolled to the third base side. Kept his composure. Caden picked it up. Fired over to Trent Wimpkin. In time to get Hartsock. 1-3 on the putout. In the inning for the Indians. They get one run. And they do so on one hit. No Ram errors. And three left on base for the Indians. After an inning of play here at Wauseon High School. See Tenor Rams four and the Wauseon Indians one on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. The law office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back at Wauseon High School, we're finally heading to inning number two after a first inning that took 30 minutes. 4-1 Rams lead. Rams sent nine to the plate in the first inning, so they send their Regular top of the order, Mosier, Radzik, and Wolfram to face Keaton Hartsock. Hartsock, as we said, in that first inning threw 39 pitches. Radzik threw 28. Both pitchers with troubles finding the strike zone. 39 pitches for Hartsock, 22 strikes, 17 balls. And for Radzik, Caden had 28 pitches. 13 strikes and 15 balls. Mosier, Radzik, and Wolfram will face Hartzok with the Rams leading 4 1 here in a second. Congratulations. Can't spit it out. Congratulations to the Rams track team. Don't have the official results yet. Had the Tri County meet last night. Or the Defiance County meet, I guess. Lawrence Sattler, another record. Wow. 
think Jackson Durfee and Lori Sattler, you're probably looking at the two greatest runners in the history of Tenora track and cross country. Those two, I can't say enough nice things about those two. Owen Ackerman set a record as well over the weekend. Broke his own school record, 6-5. And the high jump, first pitch to... Come on, Aaron. Be a dog. Aid Mosier is outside. One ball and no strikes. 4-1 Rams here on the top of inning number two. Come on. Two balls and no strike. First to bat, Mosier flew out to Cale Albright in left field. But between <laughs> Durfee and Sattler, this is a fantastic one-two punch for the Rams track team. 2-0 pitch is a strike. Their final regular season meet will be the GMCs, which will be this the Friday night at Ayersville. They were just there the last week, two weekends ago. For the line shot, second base side, one hop. Ryan Marks scoops it up, fires over to first base in time to get Aiden right, Mosier. 4 3 on that put out. Oh, God. Kaden Radzik steps in. Radzik singled, stole the base, and scored on a throwing error in the first inning. 400 for Caden coming in. Average will go up a couple points. First pitch to Caden is a strike. 22 runs, or 21 runs batted in for Caden. Now 13 stolen bases on the season after his first inning steal. Hard Sox pitch to Radzik inside. One ball and one strike. One out. Base is empty. Top of the second inning here at Wasion. 4-1 Rams. 1-1 one, one pitch from Keaton Hard Sox. A little bit outside. Two balls and one strike. Beautiful afternoon turning into evening here at Wasion. Fantastic crowd. Not a cloud in the sky, Seven now 71 degrees on your David Frank weather. 2-1 pitch to Radzik is called a strike. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Junior Radzik, Radzik on the mound for the Rams. 2-2 pitch to him is outside ball three. Count goes full at three balls and two strikes. Three two pitch to Razik. Slow roller third base side. Little up with it. Throws over in time to Jude Armstrong. Nice stretch over there by Jude to retire Radzik. Five three on the putout. That's the second out of the inning. Don Wolfram's gonna step in for the Rams. Wolfram walked and scored on another air by the Wasian Indians in the first inning. Rams sent nine to the plate in the first, scored four runs on two hits. I think he was. That sounds right. Pitch to Dalton stays high and away, ball one. Hard sock comes set. Pitch is called a strike on the outside corner. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Base is empty. Two outs here in the top of the second. Rams lead 4-1. Senior righty Hart Sox pitch is strike on the outside corner. Or from behind, one ball and two strikes. Hard Sox pitch. Wolfram smashes it in the center field. Coming in is Delgado. Puts it away for out number three. Rams go quickly here in the second. Hard Sox sends them down in order. One, two, three for Tenora. No runs. No hits. No Indian errors. The Rams do not leave anybody on base. After an inning and a half here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, it is Tenora four and Wasian. One.
Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams! Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events, broadcast on YouTube, and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Bottom of the second we go here at Wauseon. 8, 9, and 1 for the Indians to face Caden Radzik. Braden Miller, Kale Albright, and then the top Jude Armstrong to face Radzik. First pitch. Foul at the plate. Strike one. Keaton Hartsock righted his ship in the top of the inning. We'll see if Caden Radzik can't right his ship here in the bottom part. I can feel it. Radzik winds it up. 0-1 to Miller. Just misses. One ball and one strike. Bossman behind the plate, Trevor Wimpkin at first, Plasman at second, Luke Harris at short, Karen Ward at third for the Rams. We'll set the outfield after this pitch. Radzik's 1-1 to Miller, swung on, a little soft one hopper to shortstop. Harris fires over to Wimpkin in time to get Braylon Miller for out number one. Nice play by the Rams, not so often shortstop, Luke Harris. Going to bring up the number nine hitter, Luke All or Kale Albright, in the outfield. Mosier is in left, Gus Weiler in center, and Dalton Wolfram is in right for Coach Renolette. Kale Albright, the number nine hitter, bats from the left side of the plate, plays in left field for Coach Thomas. First pitch by Radzik inside, ball one. Albright, just a freshman. Razzik's 1-0 pitch to Albright. Swung on and missed. Count evens at one ball, one strike, one out here in the bottom of inning number two. Bases are empty. Rams lead 4-1. What a guy. Radzik comes set. It's 1-1 one, one pitch. Albright drills it to center field. Gus Weiler brings a couple steps in and puts it away. Albright hit it right on the head. Little liner. But if you're going to hit it to anybody, you don't want to hit it in the vicinity of number 25 in green out there in center field. So Gus Weiler comes in, makes a chest-high catch to retire Albright for out number two. Top of the lineup for the Indians, Jude Armstrong. Armstrong singled. Stole to second base and then scored on a wild pitch. First pitch, he fouls it off for the Rams' dugout on the first base side. Strike one. I don't know. Why I'm driving to do this? Actually, went to third on the wild pitch and scored on the Delgado RBI. Single, stolen base, moved to third on the wild pitch and scored on Delgado's RBI. 0-1 pitch is inside off the glove of Hunter Bosselman. One ball and one strike. Radzik winds up his 1-1 pitch. Outside corner, strike two call to Jude Armstrong. <laughs> Radzik gets the sign from Bosselman. Long look in. One, two, pitch to Armstrong. Outside corner off the glove of Bosselman. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs. Base is empty. Rams lead by three here in the bottom of inning number two. Inning number two going much better than inning number one for both pitchers. Radzik 
Radzik 2-2 pitch to Jude Armstrong. Swung on, fouled it off third base side. The on-deck hitter, Eli, Eli Delgado, fetches it. Throws it back to the umpire. He checks it out and gives the ball back to Bosselman, who fires it back to Radzik. Pittsburgh Sioux. Beautiful night for a win here. 2-2 two -two pitch by Caden. Outside corner. Strike three called. Armstrong goes down looking for out number three. In the inning. Like we said, much better inning for both starting pitchers. Both go down in order for the Indians. No runs, no hits, no ram errors, and nobody left on base. After two innings of play at Wauseon High School, it's the Tenor Rams four and the Wauseon Indians one. On your drop zone, Pizzeria Scoreboard. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Back at Wauseon High School. Top of inning three we go. For the Rams, they're going to send up four, five, and six. Taryn Ward, Luke Harris, and Hunter Bosselman to face Keaton Hartsock. Hartsock, as we said last inning, struggled like Radzik did in the first inning. Both pitchers definitely felt more comfortable in the second as both Radzik and Hartsock retired their hitters in order. One, two, three. So we'll see what the top of the third brings here. Four runs in the first inning for the Rams. He did so on two hits. Four errors. Two fielding errors. And then two throwing errors for the Indians. And Watson has one run on one hit. Leading off the Rams in the top half of inning number three, number four, Taryn Ward. Ward reached on there, came around to score in the first inning. I'm getting one right here. Right here. Senior righty Keaton Hartsock gets the sign from Tyson Rodriguez. First pitch, nice breaking ball, catches the outside corner. Strike one to the Rams third baseman, Taryn Ward. We'll be back at Tenora High School on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. <laughs> Pitch is just a bit low and outside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Kaylee will have the girls game on Friday. Sectional opener for Coach Fairchild Lady Rams. Ward swings, sends a soft fly ball into left field. Like a nice running catch is Kale Albright out there to retire Taryn Ward. Aww. Number one, Luke, Luke Harris, Harris going to step in. Harris reached on an air and also came around to score in the first inning. Back-to-back -back errors in the first inning for the Wauseon defense. Pitch to Harris by Hartsock is up and in. One ball to Luke Harris. Harris, first team all GMC in basketball this season. Average 18 points a contest. Drills it to left field. Couple steps in by Albright. Puts it away. Back to back. Fly balls to left. Going to bring up Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman walked in the Rams' four run first inning. 275 for Hunter coming in with 13 runs batted in. Hard sock. First pitch is high, ball one to Hunter Bosselman. <laughs> one ball and no strikes. To the backstop, it goes off the glove of Tyson Rodriguez. Two balls and no strikes. Rams on deck hitter Eli Plasman retrieves the baseball. <laughs> 2 0 pitch to Bosselman inside, ball three. Base is empty. Two outs here in the top of the third. Tenor with a 4-1 lead on the road at Wasihan. 
3-0 pitch. Ball four. A little low and outside. So Bosselman draws a two-out walk. Trots down the first base. Going to bring up Eli Plasma. And Eli with a two RBI single in the first. He went to second on the throw. So Bosselman with a short lead at first. Keaton Artsock looks over. First pitch to Plasman is low. Ball one. Did you pitch him into the dirt? How many has that dude pitched into the dirt? Was it like two four? Only in the third inning. Bosselman does have two steals on the season. Not really a threat to go. Pitch is low and in. Ball gets away from Rodriguez. Down to second base goes Bosselman. So Bosselman goes to second on the wild pitch. Rants with a runner in scoring position with two out. Count to Eli is two balls and no strikes. Delta will be in Thursday, who the Rams could possibly play Delta if they were to knock off Ottawa Hills. But the Rams will play the winner of Ottawa Hills and Delta in another wild pitch. Bosselman heads down to third. He's in there standing. Rodriguez fired down, but not in time. Back-to-back -back wild pitches. Put Bosselman at third with two outs. Count to Plasman is three balls and no strikes. <laughs> they told the ball right. But the Rams will be at home May 19th, and they will play the winner of Otto Hills and Delta. I believe that's a Friday night. Hostiano will take on the Defiance Bulldogs. I believe that's also on May 19th. Didn't the coach do that once? In like a big league game? Pitch to Eli is called strike one. Eli took a half a step towards first base. Thought it was ball four. Five o'clock, May 19th. I believe that's at Defiance High School. 3-1 pitch is called strike two. Again, Plasman did not think so. Took another half step towards first base, so Eli should be swinging on this pitch. 3-2 pitch, swung on and fouled off first base side. Was well, three balls and no strikes. Keaton Hartsock came back to get two check swings called strikes. Eli thought they were balls. Runner at third was Hunter Bosselman, two outs. Keaton Hartsock gets a sign from Tyson Rodriguez. He fires. That one's high and away ball four. Eli finally draws the walk. He heads down to first base. Rams with runners at first and third. That's going to bring up Connor Wolfram. Plasman. And Bosselman on the base pass. Definitely not the two speediest of runners for Coach Renouette. Usually tries to steal a run here. We'll see what he wants to do. Pitch to Wolfram up and in. Leans Connor back out of the way. Ball one. Hartsock comes set. Looks at the runners. Pitch to Wolfram is strike called on the inside corner. One ball and one strike to Connor Wolfram. Rams have runners at the corners with two outs in the top of the third. They lead four to one. There goes Plasman. Wolfram, little blooper in right field coming in as a right fielder. Can't make the play. That's a fair ball. Scoring is Bosselman. Hustling the third is Plasman. Connor Wolfram just reaches out, puts the bat on the ball, bloops it into right field in front of Mason Thomas for the RBI. So Eli is on at third. Bosselman scored to make a 5-1 to Nora. Number nine hitter, Grady Gusweiler steps in. Grady grounded out to second base his first time up. 3-16 on the season for Grady. Seven runs batted in, 13 walks, and seven steals. Hartsock comes set. There goes Connor Wolfram. Throw down to second. Not in time. Connor Wolfram in with a stolen base. For Connor, that's his fourth stolen base of the season. So Connor picks up an RBI in the stolen base this inning. That pitch was a ball. Pitch to Gus Weiler is outside. Two balls and no strikes to Grady. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier waits on deck. 
Hartsock. 73 pitches, 38 strikes. Pitches inside corner, strike call to the Rams center fielder, Junior Grady Gusweiler. Where's number 25 on his black jersey? Wolfram leads from second, Plasman leads from third, 2 1 pitch to Gusweiler outside corner, strike call. Two balls and two strikes to Grady, two outs. Hartsock winds it up. Pitch swung on, fouled back. Two two coming to Gusweiler. Keaton Hartsock's pitch outside. Three balls and two strikes to Grady. 5-1 Rams lead as they bat here in the top of inning number three. Hard Sox 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Down goes Gus Weiler and the Rams. In the inning, Rams get one run. They do so on one hit. And for the Indians, a couple wild pitches, no errors. Rams leave 2-1 base, so after... Two and a half innings of play at Wauseon High School. It's the Tenor Rams 5 and the Wauseon Indians 1 on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polished Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polished Salon is a proud supporter of Tenora Rams Live. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Here at Wauseon High School, the Rams of Tenora with a 5-1 lead over the Indians on a beautiful Tuesday for baseball. Not a cloud anywhere in sight. 71 degrees on your David Frank weather forecast. For Wauseon, 2, 3, and 4 to face Caden Radzik, Delgado, Rodriguez, and Clymer to face the junior right-hander. Oh, shortstop, Radzik gets the start here with the Rams having four games this week. Said the rest of the Rams schedule is back at Sonora Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The Rams will be home. So get out out there and catch the Rams who have the number one seed in the region. We'll play the 19th at home in the sectional finals. Radzik, long look in, gets the sign. First pitch inside. <laughs> to center fielder Eli, Eli Delgado. Delgado with a RBI single in the first. No. Radzik's 1-0 pitch to Delgado outside. Two balls and no strikes. <laughs> Coach Thomas, coaching at third, got action in his bullpen. <laughs> Radzik's 2-0 pitch is fouled at the plate. Two balls and one strike. Somebody's warming up there down there for the Indians. Could see them in the top of the fourth. Climber nearing 80 pitches the last I checked. Or not Climber, uh, Hartsock. Climber on deck. <laughs> Climber two batters away. 2-1 pitches. Fouled off right field side. Dalton Wolfram giving chase. Runs out of room. Count to number two hitter. Eli Delgado is two balls and two strikes. Bottom of inning number three over here at Wauseon High School. Rams with a 5-1 to one lead. Four runs in the first inning for Tenora. 
Razzik gets the sign, winds it up. 2-2 pitch coming to Delgado, outside ball three. Delgado bats from the right side of the plate. That was weird. Senior Delgado waits the full count pitch from Radzik. Here it comes. Swung on, fouled at the plate. Fouled it off his foot. Ball went down the first baseline, picked up by Radzik. That one, that one hurts. Delgado all the way back to the on-deck circle, trying to walk it off. Long stroll for Eli. If anybody that's ever fouled a pitch off your toes or your inside of your ankle, and those of you who haven't, just go grab a hammer and just smash the inside of your foot. That's kind of what it feels like. Delgado, a little gingerly, walks back. Coach Renolette is going to come out and have a brief conversation with his, the home plate umpire. Basically, I think he's just giving Delgado a couple more seconds. So, BR heads back to the dugout. 3-2 pitch coming to Delgado from Radzik. Caden gets the sign, winds it up. Here it comes. Swung on, hit the center field. Gus Weiler comes in, loses the cap. Camps underneath it, puts it away. For out number one. F8 on the put out. Delgado was the first out here in the third. Going to bring up Tyson Rodriguez. Ty, uh, Tyson Rodriguez walked in the first. Rodriguez behind the plate for Coach Thomas and the Indians. First pitch from Radzik. Strike call. Nice breaking ball by Caden. They said we can't ask for a better day for baseball. Light breeze coming in from center field. Pitch hit right back to Radzik. He scoops it up, fires over to Wimpkin for out number two. One three on the put out. Not a cloud in sight. Minimal wind. Fantastic crowd. Stopping in is Caden Clymer. Clymer struck out swinging in the first. He's your DH. He's hitting for the third baseman, Cage Little. Razzik's pitch. Breaking ball stays a bit inside. One ball and no strikes. Ryan Marks is on deck for the Wasion Indians. One zero pitch inside off the glove of Vosselman. Two balls and no strikes. Try and check, but I'm pretty sure that this season in football, the Rams and Indians do not play. Two zero pitch coming. Ground ball shortstop side. Harris up with it. Rifles it over to first base. In time to get Climber. 6-3 on the put out. That retires the Indians here in the third. They go quietly. No runs, no hits, no ram errors. Nobody left on base after three innings here at Wasion High School. It's the Tenor Rams 5 and the Wasion Indians 1 on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day -day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273, and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy an ice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. 
back here at Wauseon High School. Rams with a 5-1 lead. They scored four runs in the first and a single run in the third. Wauseon had their single run coming in the first. They had an opportunity to score more. They had bases loaded with one out and just played it the one run. Try to check Arbiter, but Arbiter on phone and Arbiter on a, on a laptop. <laughs> So game two this year, the Rams will play at Otsego. Game one is the usual 18 at home versus Liberty Center. Game two this year, which is usually versus Wauseon, is now at Otsego. And game three this year for non-conference will be home versus the Archibald Blue Streaks. Aiden Moser steps in, bunks at third base side, foul. Moser at the plate today is 0 for 2 as first two at bat were in the first and second inning. Mosier came in with a 308 average with four runs batted in and 14 stolen bases for the Tenor Rams. Rams as a team have 63 stolen bases. It's not on One pitch inside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. And not to <laughs> I said it Thursday when we played Delphus or Delphus Jefferson. Columbus Grove. Columbus Groves had 100 stolen bases coming into that game as a team. Now, that's just astonishing. Mosier reaches out, serves it into left field. Coming in is Albright to make a diving catch. Cale Albright just stole a single from Aiden Mosier. So Mosier's retired on the fantastic play out there and left by Cale Albright. Giving him bad luck. Albright. Lunge put the glove out there and got the out on Mosier. It's going to bring up Caden Radzik. First pitch to Caden is a strike. Radzik singled, stole the base, and scored in the first. Grounded out to third in the second. Oh, hi. Keaton Hartstock is still on the mound for the Indians. Had activity, we said, in the bullpen for the Indians. And Coach Thomas staying with Hart Sock. That one sails way behind Radzik and heads to the backstop. Dalton Wolfram goes back there and scoops it up. Two balls and one strike to Caden. Base is empty. One out here in the top of the fourth. Rams with a 5-1 lead on this beautiful Tuesday. Hart Sox 2-1 to Caden. Swung on. Little fly ball into shallow left field. Just lands foul. Albright again. Nice hustle out there. Tried to get it. Came up just a little bit short. And for baseball-wise, Thursday, Bluffton will be at Sonora. Friday, Bryan. And Saturday, Miller City. And next Monday... Delta will be home, and Tuesday, Archibald will make up game. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Radzik. Swung on. This one's popped up into shallow right field. Mason Thomas out there puts it away to retire Radzik for the second out here in the fourth inning. Going to bring up Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram walked and scored in the first, flew out to center in the second. Hard Sox pitch to Wolfram as a ball. One ball and no strikes. Two outs. Bases empty here in the top of the fourth. 5-1 to Nora. Pitch from Hart Sock to Wolfram is outside corner. Just misses though. Two balls and no strikes. Hart Sock out of the windup. 2-0 to Wolfram. Pitch is inside. Three balls and no strikes to Dalton. On deck for the Rams is Taryn Ward. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I look down at your house. No. 3-0 pitch to Dalton Wolfram. Strike call. Hart Sock nailed the center of the plate there. 3-1 and one to Dalton Wolfram. Be swinging away on this one if it's close. 
Hard Sox 3-1. Strike, two called. Count goes full to Dalton. Stepped just a couple inches closer to the plate. I don't know why Brian and Arch are not in That one's outside. Down to first base goes Dalton Wolfram with a two-out walk. Number four, Taryn Ward. Taryn Ward steps in, reached on an error in the first, came around to score, flew out to Albright and left in the third. Ward, one for two. Wolfram, always a threat to go. Dalton, 15 stolen bases this season. Hartsock comes set. There goes a heck of a jump by Wolfram. Throw down by Rodriguez. Not in time. He double clutched, but it still wouldn't have had a chance. So Wolfram with the stolen base. That's his 16th on, his, on the season. And what we've seen from Dalton here lately, he's going to take off and trying to steal third base. Huge lead by Wolfram at second. Pitch to Ward is inside. Ball two to Terran. Luke Harris awaits on deck. If, if Dole can get a good jump down there at second, he's going to head to third. Hart Sock comes set, looks back at Wolfram. Looks again. Big jump by Wolfram. 2-0 pitch. Two Ward catches the corner. Strike call. Two balls and one strike. Two outs. Rams have a runner in scoring position at second base. Terran Ward at the plate. Hart Sock looks back at Wolfram. 2-1 pitch coming. Low ball three. Oh my land. I will call you. Wolfram, he's just getting a big lead down there a second. She wouldn't care. So. Fred Miller slides in a little bit. Now Miller goes back to his shortstop position. Pitch to the plate. Ward sends a deep drive to left center field. Back goes Albright. Puts the glove up in left center gap and puts it away. Ward gave it a ride. Albright tracked it down for out number three in the inning for Tenora. They threaten. They do not score. No runs. No hits. No errors. And the Rams leave Wolfram at second. After four and a half innings of play here at Wauseon on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard is the Tenor Rams 5 and the Wauseon Indians 1 here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. The Adam Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Bat and Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Bat and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Bottom of inning number four, five, six, and seven for the Indians to face Caden Radzik, Ryan Marks, Mason Thomas, and Keaton Hartsock. To face Radzik. Radzik, after that rough first inning, has righted the ship and definitely calmed down for Caden. Radzik, 52 pitches, 28 strikes. He's pitched three innings allowed, two hits, one run. That was earned. Struck out three and walked two. Ryan Marks walked in the first for the Indians. Bats from the left side of the plate. Radzik gets a sign from Hunter Bosman. Winds it up. His first pitch swung on. Fouled right back at us here. Have the game on YouTube later tonight, early in the morning. Like I said, sometimes you can upload a YouTube video in a couple hours. Otherwise, it sometimes it takes like six. Oh, one pitch inside corner strike. Two call to Marks. So Radzik ahead of second baseman Ryan Marks. No balls and two strikes. Radzik gets the ball back. Gets the sign. 0-2 pitch. Just a bit high. One ball and two strikes. 
strikes. Those flags don't even look like all my trucks. That one truck. Wind blowing in ever so slightly from center field. One two pitch. Low off the chest protector of Bosselman caught his right hand. Two balls and two strikes now to Marks. Mason Thomas on deck for the Indians. Radzik, 2-2. Two, two. Inside, ball three. Marks will work the count to three balls and two strikes after being down 0-2. Oh Three two pitch coming to Marks from Radzik. That's low. Marks has worked the leadoff walk after being down no balls and two strikes. Bring up Mason Thomas struck out looking in the first. He's 0 for 1. Runner leads from first. Marks throw over. Oh, they picked him off. Radzik jumped off, fired over to Whipkin. Whipkin slapped the tag on Marks, caught stealing. I guess he's not caught stealing, he's picked off. Goal goes to caught stealing. So that's the first out at first base. Coach Thomas gonna go <laughs> asking where the tag was. Whatever answer he gets is not going to be the one he likes. So Marks picked off first for the first out. He's going to ring up Mason Thomas. Thomas struck out looking in the first. First pitch is a low ball one. Razzik's 1-0 oh, inside. Skipping out of the way was Thomas. Keaton Hartsock awaits on deck for the Indians. Caden Radzik gets the sign from Bossom and he winds it up. The 2-0 pitch to Thomas is all three. <laughs> Base is empty, one out here in the bottom of the fourth. 5-1 Rams, 3-0 pitch coming. Outside corner strike called to the number six hitter, Mason Thomas. One one pitch, swung on and miss. Or three one pitch, swung on and miss. Count goes full at three and two. <laughs> Payoff pitch, check swing, stays high down the first base with the another walk is Mason Thomas. Unfortunately for the Indians, Marks was pricked off first base. So Razik back to back walks. Hartsock steps in with one out. Dude, you laugh like a four year old woman. Coach Thomas. I have a bunch of heads over to first base. I know. Yeah, but I have a conversation with his runner over there. Rams with the meeting on the infield. That breaks up quickly. <laughs> Number seven hitter, Keaton Hartsock, steps in. Hartsock bats from the left side. Grounded back to Radzik in the first inning. 5-1 Rams lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Runner at first. One out. Throw over. That one's a little bit off. Wimpkins scoops it up. Back standing was Mason Thomas. Radzik looks over, looks again, comes set. Pitch to Hartsock, inside corner, strike call. No balls, one strike, two Hartsock, one out. Indians have a runner at first. They trail by four here in the fourth inning. 
It will literally sit on my floor. Alan Miller on deck. Throw over. Back is the runner, Thomas. I appreciate it. No, you're not hungry. Yes, I am. 30 dollars. 30 bucks. But let me have it just till Friday. It takes three days. Razzik comes set. Pitch to the plate. Outside ball one. One ball and one strike. Subs. To Keaton Hartsock. I just, I just want your speaker until Friday this week. I'm leaving this week. When on Friday. Razzik gets the sign. He comes set. Pitch just a bit inside. Two balls and one strike. Okay, I'll make it work. Then. I'll, yes, I will. I'll no. Hour and 20 minutes old we are here at Wauseyan High School. We're in the bottom of inning number four. Radzik comes set. This 2-1 pitch. That one's high. Ball three. Three balls and one strike. To his counterpart, Keaton Hartsock. On at first base is Mason Thomas. Thank you for letting me borrow your Ryan Marks actually let off the inning with the walk. He got picked off first base. Time called. Hartsock steps out. Radzik is set. He's back on the mound. He's ready to go. Hartsock digs in. Radzik looks over at first base. Thomas leads away. Stays put. Pitch. Swung on. Popped up to right field. Wolfram out there underneath it. Dalton the camps puts it away for out number two. So Dalton, normally the Rams catcher, is playing in right field to give him a little break. We've had four games coming up this week for the Rams. Then back Monday and Tuesday. First chance today for Dalton. Makes it look easy out there in right. Number eight hitter Braylon Miller steps in. Miller grounded out to Luke Harris at short. His first plate appearance. Runner at first base now. Two outs. Mason Thomas. First pitch to Miller is a strike. our first train here today. As it gets to the side, looks over at first. 0-1 pitch coming to Miller. Strike two called. Oh, breaking ball looked a little bit high. Caught the high outside corner for strike two on Braylon Miller. Gail Albright is on deck for the Indians. Razzik checks the runner, checks him again. 0-2 pitch coming to Miller. Just missed on the inside corner. One ball and two strikes. Razzik, 71 pitches, 36 strikes, about 50% on the strike ball ratio. 5-1 Rams lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Razzik's pitch, breaking ball stays high. Two balls and two strikes. Same schedule. Nothing changed. She's more than normal. She's not spoiled. I can tell. Hartsock gets 98 pitches. Go over. Back safely is Mason Thomas for Wasian. Razik wipes off his pitching hand. Hops back on the mound. Gets set. Gets a sign. 2 2 pitch coming. Low. Gets behind Bossel and down to second base goes Mason Thomas. Whatever he wiped it, he wiped it. <laughs> wiped his own Vaseline or something. So Thomas goes down to second on the wild pitch. Count goes full to Braylon Miller. Three balls and two strikes. Burner leads away from second. There's two outs in the inning. Big pitch coming up here for Razik. He steps off. Miller steps out. He steps back in. Razik looks back at the runner at second. He comes set. Payoff pitch. Low ball four. Third walk in the inning. Braylon Miller trots down to first base. Okay, but then you can get shower, get ready. Got to bring up the number nine hitter, Kale Albright. Timeout. Coach Renolette's going to come out and have a conversation with. Radzik can't actually see if anybody's throwing down there in the Rams bullpen. Kind of obstructed from that by the wall and the first base dugout. Rams have <laughs> four or five runs here today with just three hits. Where the Wasayan Indians have one run on <laughs> one hit. Coach Renolette's conversation's over with Radzik. And back to the first base dugout. 
Runners for Guazian head back to their bases. Mason Thomas at second. Braylon Miller back to first at the plate is Kale Albright. He is 0 for 1. Flew out to Gus Weiler in the second. Albright, the freshman, bats from the right side of the plate. He's little. Little 5-2 me running around. A nice catch earlier in this contest in left field. Runners lead from first and second. First pitch to Albright. Strike called on the inside corner. I not launched you. I was still sitting out there launching. You launched me first. I was mad. I was like, all right, bet. We're going to play this game. We're going to play this game. Radzik comes set. Yeah. Looks at the runners. Oh. 0-1 to Albright. Swung on and missed. Fouled at the plate. Radzik ahead. No <laughs> balls and two strikes. We said nice crowd here at Wasion on this beautiful Tuesday. Fans brought their own lawn chairs, some of them, setting all the all along the left field fence. All right, digs back in on the left side. Radzik's 0-2. Looks at the runner's lead from first and second. Comes set. Pitch inside. Nice stop by Bosselman. Save the pitch heading to the backstop and to move the runners up. I don't care. Miller's at first. Thomas is at second. One two pitch coming to Kale Albright. Ground ball, shortstop side. Harris up with it. Over to Plasma. It goes off his glove. That's going to get a run in for. Come on, dude. Do better. Wasian scoring is. That's four. That's four sprints. Thomas. So Thomas makes it five to two. Down bag. Down bag. Error on the Rams on throw. So Albright's on it first on the air. Can't really see angle-wise here. The throw looked to be good. Just hit off the glove of Eli Plasman. That's going to be it. Heading to the mound is head coach Brent Renolette. And we're going to see Corbin Castile. We'll be back with the numbers on Castile, which have been fantastic here lately. And we will do it right after this time out. High standards, hard work, sincerity. For the past 37 years, those have been the day-to-day -day ideals behind Bat and Stevens, regarded as one of the finest auto body repair shops in the six-county area. Our technicians understand how you feel about your vehicle, so they're trained to know your automobile inside and out. Bat and Stevens will provide you with fine workmanship at a fair price. We will work closely with you to ensure your complete satisfaction. We believe full service is one of the keys to complete collision repair. Once your vehicle enters our shop, you can be sure it is handled with the utmost attention to detail at every phase of the repair process. Our skilled professionals are committed to this high standard of quality on every job, from small dings to major collision damage. Whether it is just fitting decorative trim pieces or restoring your vehicle's entire structure, we work on all makes and models, foreign and domestic, including recreational vehicles. Our state-of-the-art equipment helps us perform every kind of job with a lifetime guarantee. Free estimates can be obtained anytime and loaner cards are available by appointment. Batten Stevens Body Shop has also been selected as the 2020 Crescent News Reader's Choice Awards Favorite Body Shop in the Six County Area. Batten Stevens Body Shop, located in downtown Jewel, Ohio. 419-497-3111. That's 419-497-3111. Few changes here we'll Don't give you as Corbin <laughs> like Castillo comes on the pitch. Dalton Wolfram comes in from right field to first base. Luke Harris goes from shortstop to right. Razik, who is on the mound, goes back to his normal spot at shortstop. So we'll reset the Rams defense after we get the numbers on Castillo. Castillo, 5 and 2, 36 and a third innings pitch, 19 runs, 8 earned runs. He's allowed 42 hits, 11 walks, struck out 40, has an ERA of 1.54. And for Corbin, coming off that shutout against Patrick Henry. No, this is actually Mason McQuillan, my fault. It's 23, not 22. So Mesa McQuillan is all in relief, not Corbin Castillo. I thought there was a lot of innings for Corbin to pitch here in the last week. So it's not Corbin Castillo. It's actually 
Mason McQuillan. So for McQuillan, this will be his first appearance on the mound at the varsity level this year. 5-2 Rams here in the bottom of the fourth. There's two outs. Runners for the Indians are at first and third. Braden Miller's at third. Cale Albright's at first. And to the plate, top of the lineup, Jude Armstrong. So McQuillan's on the mound. Bosselman behind the plate. Wolfram, Dalton's at first. Plasman's at second. Radzik's at short. Ward is at third. Outfield, Mosier, Gus Weiler, and Harris left to right. McQuillan into the pressure cooker he goes. He comes set. First pitch to Armstrong by McQuillan is a strike on the outside corner. Mason. Junior right-hander on the mound for the Rams in relief here. Pitch by McQuillan outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike to Jude Armstrong. Armstrong struck out looking his last plate appearance. He's one for two. Single, stole the base, and scored in the first. McQuillan's 1-1 one, one to Armstrong. Low gets behind Bossman, but not far enough. Two balls and a strike to Jude Armstrong. 5-2 Rams lead here in the bottom of the fourth. McQuillan comes set. 2-1 coming to Armstrong. Drills it to right field. Harris goes back. Puts it away to retire Armstrong and the Indians here in the fourth. But the Indians get a run closer. They get one run in the inning, and that's a huge pickoff. Now that you look back on it, that Marks was picked off first to lead off the inning. In the inning, he said no one run for the Indians. They get no hits, no errors, and two are left on base. For through four here at Wauseon High School on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, it is Tenora five and Wauseon two. Getting better together is our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. A.J. Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud Tenora alum says go Rams. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one -on -one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing. Rather than going to the gym merely to work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and so to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Back here at Wasyon, pitching chains for the Indians as well. Cooper Balls comes on the pitch. And the third base is Keaton Hartsock, so Hartsock goes to third, placing Gage Little, and Cooper Balzer enters the game at the pitcher's position. Luke Harris steps in, will be the first enter Balzer faces. First pitch to Luke is a strike. Harris reached on an error in the first and scored, flew out to left in the third. Balzer's pitch to Harris, high. One ball and one strike to the Rams. Now right fielder Luke Harris. Harris started it short. They hung out yesterday. Came on. Switched when Mason McQuillan came on in relief of Caden Radzik last inning. Try to get the numbers on Radzik here when we have a second. Balls are 2-1 to Harris. Harris, a little blooper and foul territory. First baseman gives chase. Jude Armstrong almost caught up with that little blooper off the bat of Luke Harris. 
right by Coach Anders over there coaching at first. Two oh. two pitch coming to Harris from Balzer. High and away, ball three. Cooper Balzer, a junior, goes from the right side. For Radzik. We'll get those numbers after this. Harris, little infield blooper. Caught by the shortstop. Raylan Miller for out number one. Radzik pitched three in the two thirds innings, gave up two hits. Two runs, one earned run, struck out three, and walked five. Hunter Bosselman steps in for the Rams. Bosselman, 275 on the season. He's behind the plate here today. Walked in the first, walked in the third, and scored on a Dalton Wolfer, a RBI. First pitch swinging, fouls it off first base side, out of play. One ball, one strike, one out. Base is empty. Rams lead 5-2 as they bat here in the top of the fifth. Thank you, Roger, for the update. Thanks for joining us. Bosselman laces it inside the bag at third. By Hartsock. He's going to hold on with a long single. So Bosselman. Nice hustle out there by Albright to hold Bosselman with a long single. At first, that had a double written all over it. But freshman, Kale Albright, out there and left, jetted over there, scooped it up, and held Bosselman to a single. Going to bring up Eli Plasman. First pitch to Plasman's a strike. Eli with a single and two runs batted in in the first, walked in the third. Balzer comes set, pitch to Plasman, goes behind him. He was a count at one ball and one strike. And of course, his teammates telling Eli to wear it. Well, you don't want to wear like a 80 mile an hour fastball in your ribs. Might hurt a bit. 1-1 one, one pitch, stays high. Two balls and one strike to the Rams second baseman, Eli Plasman. I can't even see it. He's so short. Connor Wolf from one deck for tomorrow. 2-1 pitch to Eli. Little tapper, third base side. Third baseman Hartsock fields it. Throws down to second. Second baseman bobbled it, but not before the out was registered. So Bosselman's cut down on the fielder's choice at second. Plasman's on at first. 6-4 on the fielder's choice. So Connor Wolfram steps in. With a runner at first now, Eli Plasman just replaces Hunter Bosselman, basically. So Wolfram struck out in the first, had an RBI single in the third. First pitch to Connor, strike called. Connor, 286 coming in, had four runs batted in. Connor is, was DHing for Trent Wimpkin, who has exited in the game. Trent started at first. Breaking ball up and in. One ball, one strike to Connor. I do. Two outs here in the top of the fifth. Five, two Rams. I was the, I did C4 and one of the jars that was this big. Balls are come set. Pitch to Connor Wolfram inside. Two balls and a strike to Connor. I live every weekday. Mine is not that big. Delta, Brian and Miller City, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Groove Field. I never tingled until I Two, one pitch. That's right. Called Friday. It's supposed to rain. That's the softball sectionals. So hopefully that weather changes. Balls are come set. Looks at the runner at first. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Connor Wolfram. Connor fouls it off. First base side out of play. Well, that was the one I checked the weather last night. You know how weather changes. Here, it's sunny in 71. Still not a cloud anywhere. What was he in there? 2 2 pitch from Balzer to Connor inside ball three. Count goes full. Daily forecast Friday still calls for showers and 72. Chance of rain is 60%, so we'll see. Coach Fairchild's field trains rather well out there. There goes the runner. Pitch up and in, ball four. Connor Wolfram works a two out walk down the second base, goes Plasman. 
So Rams with runners at first and second with two outs. Nine hitter Grady Gusweiler steps in. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us. As always, Roger, Pittsburgh Zoo, Bridget, and everybody out there. If you're watching on Facebook or listening on the radio, appreciate all of you for tuning in. Pitch to Grady inside corner. Strike called. Grady 0 for 2. Grounded out in the first, struck out in the third. Balls are come set. Looks back at the runner at second. Plasman pitch to Gusweiler off the catcher's glove. It goes to the backstop. Rodriguez comes back and scoops it up, but not before. Plasman moves up third, and Connor Wolfram goes down to second. That's a wild pitcher, a pass ball, one or the other. Still results in the runners moving up. Rodriguez leaped up to grab it, hit the top of his glove, and just sailed to the backstop. Gus Wilder with runners at second and third now. Pitch to Grady. That's going to fly ball into right field. Coming in to make a nice running catch is Mason Thomas. I thought that was going to fall in, which is why he paused for a brief second. Thomas comes in, steals a hit away from Gus Weiler. Caught it just high on the run to retire Grady and the Rams. So for Tenora in the inning, they threaten. They do not score. No runs for the Rams. Tenora does not get a hit. No errors, and they leave two. Well, they do get a hit. Yes, one hit in the inning. That was by Hunter Bossom, which I thought should it was a double, but it wound up being a single. And two more left on base for the Rams. The Rams have left seven through five innings of play. Here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, it is Tenora five, and the Wauseon Indians two. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by PI&I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5% fixed, with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. That's 782-2500, Postuma Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Wauseon High School on this beautiful Tuesday, it's 5-2 Rams. Rams with four in the first. And one in the third. Wasian with one in the first and one in the fourth. Mason McQuillan going into his second inning in relief of Caden Radzik. Should have known it wasn't Corbin because Corbin wears the dark black eye makeup on the mound as most of the Rams sometimes do. First pitch from Mason McQuillan to Eli Delgado is ball one. Two, three, and four for the Indians. Delgado, Rodriguez, and Clymer to face the right-hand sophomore McQuillan. Second pitch is high and away, ball two. Try and reset the Indian or the Indians, the Rams defense again. We have another, I think we have a new first baseman out there. I think it's Riley Peters in at first. Pitch is fouled back. McCullen's on the mound. Dalton Wolfram goes behind the plate now. So that's the third position Dalton's played. <laughs> Riley Peters is on at first. Second base, Eli Plasman. Radzik's at short. Ward's at third. Outfield will set here in a second. As McQuillan gets the sign, long look in. Pitch coming till Delgado. High and away. Three balls and a strike. Outfield, Mosier in left. Gus Weiler in center and Harris in right. Delgado, an RBI single in the first, flew out to Gus Weiler in the third. 3-1 pitch coming from McQuillan here. That one's high and away. Ball for Delgado with a leadoff walk here in the fifth. Going to bring up Tyson Rodriguez. Rodriguez with a walk in the first and... Had a little soft ground ball back to Radzik in the third. Runner Delgado leads away at first. Throw over. Back in time is Delgado. 
Peter is the Rams' third first baseman this contest. Started with Ty Wimpkin, Dalton Wolfram came over their last inning, and Peters in a relief in, at first base in the fifth pitch is a strike call to Tyson Rodriguez. Rodriguez, the Indians catcher, bats number three in the Vasion lineup. Nice lead over there by Delgado, throw over high. Peters reaches up to snag it. Wind still blowing in ever so slightly from center field. Still sunny in 71 so here in Wauseon. Oh, yeah. 01 pitch high and away. One ball and one strike to Tyson Rodriguez. Caden Clymer on deck. The Quillen gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. His 1 1 pitch to Rodriguez just misses outside. Two balls. And one strike. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. Indians with a runner on first. They trail five to two. McQuillan throws over. A good throw. Would have been close. It was a little bit high. Back safely is Delgado. Rodriguez digs back in. Bats from the right side. McQuillan comes set. 2-1 pitch. This one's inside. Three balls and a strike. Game approaching. Another 10, 12 minutes. Two hours old. Bottom of the fifth inning here. 5-2 Rams. They lead by three. Indians have a runner at first with nobody out. That's Eli Delgado. Tyson Rodriguez at the plate. 3-1 pitch coming from Mason McQuillan. Strike called. Caught the upper corner. Rams home on Thursday versus Delta. Friday versus Bryant. Saturday versus Miller City. 3-2 pitch. Fouled off first base side. We're actually Bluffton. I think it's Bluffton. It's... Bluffton Thursday. It's hard to keep track anymore. Bluffton Thursday. Train number two coming. Bluffton is Thursday. Brian is Friday. Miller City is Saturday. I'll have to look at the schedule. I'm confusing myself. And the next week is somebody on Monday, which I think is Delta on Monday, and then Archibald on Tuesday. Archibald and the Rams are actually in the same bracket. I think Archibald has a number two seed in the defiance bracket. 3-2 pitch coming. High ball four. So Rodriguez trots down to first base. Back-to-back -back walks. Puts Delgado at second and Rodriguez at first. Caden Clymer, the designated hitter, steps in for the Indians. So Clymer has a chance to put the Indians right back in it. They trail 5-2 to two here in the bottom of the fifth. Mason McQuillan on the relief of Caden Radzik. Radzik went the first three and two-thirds. Yes, it does. Finals from the area already trickling in. We're still at the bottom of the fifth. McQuillan, long looking, gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. Come set. Three, two. First pitch, little soft grounder to the shortstop. Radzik fields it. He can't do anything about it. Infield single for Clymer. Loads the bases. Delgado at third. Rodriguez at second. Clymer at first. We're going to bring up Ryan Marks. Ryan Marks. So Ryan Marks is going to step in with the bases full of Indians. They trail by three here in the fifth. Marks with two at-bats and two walks. McQuillan on the mound for the Rams. Going to work out of the windup with the bases loaded. First pitch, strike on the outside corner. Marks walked last inning and was picked off first base. And, of course, the Indians proceeded to get consecutive walks after that. Quillen's 0-1 coming to Marks. Nobody out. 
strike two on the outside corner. Same spot. McQuillan hit the target. Marks didn't think so. Steps back in. Bats from the left side of the plate. McQuillan's 0-2 to Marks. Winds it up. Here it comes. Breaking ball just misses on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Ward in at the cut of the grass at third. Peters in at first. Infield back at double play depth. Rams want to get an out here, trailing or trailing, uh, winning five to three. McQuillan's one two coming to Marks. Foul back. Count stays at a ball and two strikes. One two pitch coming from McQuillan to Marks. McQuillan gets the sign. Long look in. Lines it up. Pitch hit right at Plasma at second. Throw it back to second base. Not in time to double off Rodriguez. So Marks hit it right on the nose. He hit it right at the ramp second baseman Eli Plasma for the first out. Number six hitter Mason Thomas comes to the plate. Thomas struck out looking in the first. Walked and scored in the fourth. He bats from the right side. Bases full of Indians. Now one out. McQuillan, righty on righty. Long look in by Mason. Gets a sign from Dalton. Winds it up. Breaking ball stays high and away. Ball one. Thomas saw it at the plate. Hartsock on deck. Bases full of Indians. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. The Rams lead five to two. This non-conference contest. Quillen's pitch. Strike on the outside corner. Okay. <laughs> Quillen's 1-1. One, one. Mason Thomas fouls it back. Mason McQuillen on top. One ball and two strikes. Chance for the Indians to cut the deficit from three. McQuillan's one, two. Hit shortstop side. Radzik up with it. Over to second for the force out. Over to first. Not in time. Scoring is Delgado. That's the third run for. Wasian, they trail 5-3. to three. RBI on the fielder's choice by Mason Thomas. He's on it first. Climber's on it second, and Tyson Rodriguez should be down at third. Coach Renolette's going to go out there and ask for runner interference. Does not usually is the case. Do not get the call that you're looking for. So Keaton Hartsock steps in. He's 0 for 2. Grounded back to the pitcher in the first and flew out to right. Dalton Wolfram with that put out in the fourth. Actually, runners at first and third. That runner was out at second. That's my fault. First pitch is a strike. So Thomas is on it first. And runner at third. No balls and one strike. Count to Hartsock. He hits a second base side. Plasman slides in front of it. Sets himself. Throws to Peters in time to retire the Indians. Nice play by Plasman. 4-3 on the putout for out number three. The Indians chip away. They get another run here in the fifth inning. One run for the Indians, and they get one hit. No Ram errors, and two runners left on base. After five innings of play over at Wauseon High School, let's see, Tenor Rams five and the Wauseon Indians three on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard.
Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-8940. Back at Wauseon High School, 5-3 Rams as a as we uh, head to the top of the sixth. Tenora, five runs, four hits, two errors. Wauseon, three runs, three hits, and four errors for the Indians. On for his second inning of relief for the Indians is Cooper Balzer. Balzer will face the Rams. Top part of the order, one, two, and three. Mosier, Radzik, and Wolfram. Mosier into the plate three times. Does not have a hit. Was robbed in the fourth inning by Cale Albright, the freshman in left field who's made several outstanding plays here today. Rob Mosier of... Definitely a single. Had the ball trickled away, Mosier would have been on at second for sure. So Aiden came in with a 308 average, has 14 stolen bases. First pitch by Balzer, strike called. Couple minutes shy of two hours old here at Wasion. Fantastic crowd here on this Tuesday. Pitch stays away. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Coach Anders coaching at first. Coach Renolette coaching at third for Tenora. Balzers 1-1 outside to Aiden Mosier. And Tenora with a number one seed in the Defiance region on the Sunday draw. Wasian will play Defiance on the 19th at Defiance High School. Mosier with the little dribbler shortstop side. Braden Miller scoops it up. Throws over to first base. Gets Mosier by half a step. Mosier's 0 for 4. 6-4 or 6-3 on the put out. First out of the inning. That's going to bring up the Rams shortstop. Caden Radzik. Radzik entered at 400. For Caden, he is 1 for 3. Single in the first. Stole a base and scored on an air. First pitch was a ball to Caden. Balzer's pitch. Laced inside the bag of third. Nice diving stop by the third baseman. He throws it away. Razik heads down to second. Keaton Hartsock stole the double from Radzik. In his haste to get the ball to first base, he threw it away by the first baseman, Jude Armstrong. So Radzik is at second base. Error on the throw. Be the fifth error for the Indians. And third train about to go by here at Watsion. Here up Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram steps to the plate. Dalton, two walks and two at bats. And a run. First pitch to him is a ball. Rams with the runner at second with one out. They lead 5 3 here in the top of the six. Brody, Brody Balzer, <laughs> Cooper Balzer <laughs> comes set. Wolfram laces it into left field. A solid smash. Radzik stops at third. Throw comes into the infield. Down to second base. So literally goes Dalton Wolfram. So Wolfram with the single goes to second on the throw. 
Coach Thomas can't be happy about that. Would have had runners at first and third, but the throw came errantly into the Indians' infield, allowing Wolfram alertly to jet down to second base. That's going to bring up Taryn Ward. First pitch to Ward, hit shortstop side. Shortstop up with it, off balance throw in time. Nice play by Braylon Miller. Scoring on the play, however, is Caden Radzik for the Rams' sixth run. They now lead 6-3. RBI for Ward on the fielder's choice. 6-3 on the putout for out number two. Dalton Wolfram goes down to third base. Riley Peters is going to step in for his first at bat. Swings, fouls it off first base side, out of play. No, that's actually, that's not Peters, that's Luke Harris, my bad. First pitch to Harris is fouled off. Harris, three at-bats and scored a run. This one he gets hit, so Luke trots down the first base after being hit by the pitch by Balzer. Luke, Luke reached on the air in the first and scored a run. Flew out in the outfield is next to it. So that's going to bring up Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman digs in. Hunter walked in the first, walked in the third, and singled in the fifth. One official at back by Bosselman. He's also has one hit and a run scored. First pitch as Harris darts down to second base trying to Get Rodriguez to throw so the Rams can steal a run. They do not bite. So Harris with the uncontested stolen base goes down to second. Rams with runners at second and third. Two outs. One ball, no strikes to Bosselman. Balzer's pitch just misses the inside corner. Two balls and no strikes on deck is Eli Plasman for the Rams. Balls are running in relief for the starter. Hot Hartsock swings. Bosselman does and fouls it off first base side. Two balls and one strike. Radzik and Hart's stock both started. Neither are around here. Balls are 30 pitches, 16 strikes. 2-1 pitches outside. Nice backhanded stop by the catcher. Tyson Rodriguez saved a run. Count to Bosselman goes to three balls and one strike. 6-3 Rams here at the top of the sixth. Balzer winds it up. 3-1 pitch. Fouled at the plate. Three balls and two strikes to Hunter Bosselman. Harris is at second. Dalton Wolfram is at third. Six runs, five hits, two errors for the Rams. Payoff pitch to Bosselman. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Hunter. For out number three. Balzer got a huge out there in the inning for the Rams. They get one run. They do so on one base hit. One error in the inning. And the Rams leave two more on base. Nine runners left on base through six innings for the Rams. Through six innings here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard is Tenora Six. And the Hwasayan Indians, three. We'll be back on the Strap Zone Pizzeria Scoreboard. The law office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back here at Wasyan, we head to the bottom of inning number six. And for the Indians, eight, nine, and one to face Mason McQuillan. McQuillan came on the relief of Caden Radzik. In the fourth inning, Mason, one of the third innings pitched, allowed one hit, gave up one run that was earned. He's not struck anybody out and has walked two Indian batters. Braylon Miller steps in. Miller grounded out in the second and walked in the fourth. Miller officially 0 for 1.
McClellan works out of the windup. First pitch way outside. For Mason, he's thrown 28 pitches and has 17 strikes. One zero pitch to Miller from McQuillan, fouled off. First base side into the trees. Probably a lot of baseballs back there is my guess. One one to spend a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon. You could probably come up with a couple dozen. One one pitch from McQuillan coming to Miller. Strike two called. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. Base is empty. As we're here in the bottom of inning number six at Wasion High School. One two pitch coming to Miller from McQuillan. Throws the bat on the ball, bloops it in the right field for a base hit. Harris comes over, retrieves the ball in foul territory, but not before. Braylon Miller has a leadoff single to start the Indians. Bottom of the sixth inning, that's going to bring up number nine hitter, Cale Albright. Albright with two fantastic plays out there in left field, made a fantastic catch on one, and then on a separate play, held Hunter Bosselman to a single when he was ticketed for a double. Peters holds the runner on at first. McQuillan going to work out of the set position. Albright 0 for 2. McQuillan's pitch. A little bit low. Ball one. It seems like whenever these two team plays, it's at least a two hour plus ball game. <laughs> the last two. Corbin Castile is going to head down to the bullpen. Jetting down there with Connor Wolfram. Throw over to first base. Back safely is Miller. Ball trickled away from Peters. Not far enough for Miller to advance. Actually trying to see. I think Connor Wolfram's warming up. So Connor warming up in the bullpen. McQuillan's pitch is high and away. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Six three Rams lead here in the bottom of the six. They have a runner on first with nobody out. Two balls and no strikes to Kale Albright. He's a number nine hitter. McQuillan's pitch swung on, fouled back. Two balls and one strike to Albright. Yes. Like all the motor went bad as soon as you did that. McCullen comes set, looks at the runner at first, gets the sign from Wolfram. 2-1 pitch to Albright, swung on and missed. Count goes even at two balls and two strikes. Some of the fans that were in the sun are now in the shade. McQuillan comes set. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Albright. Runner leads from first. Outside count goes full. Three balls and two strikes as Connor Wolfram continues to get warm in the Rams bullpen. Precarious 6-3 lead for the Rams here in the bottom of the sixth. I'm coming with you. Yeah. McQuillan's 3-2 pitch. Hit second base side. Plasman throws to Radzik, forced there in time at first. Twin killing for the Rams. Four, six, three. Just like that, there's two outs and the bases are empty. Pitcher's best friend, the old four, six, three double play. Nice turn there by Plasman to Radzik. Came across the bag, fired over to Peters at first. In time to get Albright by several steps. Top of the lineup, Jude Armstrong steps in. Armstrong, one for three, scored a run, struck out. Looking in the second, singled and stole the base and scored in the first, flew out in the fourth. First pitch is a strike. McQuillan winds it up. 0-1 pitch coming to Jude Armstrong. Just misses outside corner. One ball and one strike. Base is empty. Two outs now. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning. 
McQuillan. One one pitch to Armstrong is high and away. Two balls and a strike. Nice outing in relief by Mason. Armstrong sends a high fly ball to right field. Harris comes in, shades his eyes, puts it away to retire Jude Armstrong for the final out in the sixth inning. In the inning for the Indians, they go down in order. No runs, no hits, no ram errors, nobody left on base. Top of the seventh inning we go. Tenora six and Wassey on three on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Who couldn't use an extra 3000 Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams! Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events, broadcast on YouTube, and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Top of the seventh we go. For the Rams, 7-8-9, Plasman, Connor Wolfram, and Grady Gusweiler to face Cooper Balzer. Plasman digs in against Balzer. First pitch to Eli is high and away. Ball one. Plasman one for two. Walked in the third. Sends a fly ball to left field. Albright camps underneath it. Puts it away to retire Plasman for out number one here in the seventh. Albright, nice, nice looking freshman out there. Connor Wolfram steps in, struck out in the first, had an RBI single in the third, walked in the fifth. Connor was warming up last inning. We'll see if Coach Renolette stays with McQuillan or goes to Connor Wolfram. First pitch from Balzer to Wolfram is a ball. Very effective relief by Cooper Balzer as well. First 1 0 pitch is a strike. One ball, one strike to Connor Wolfram. Balzer. Junior righty on in relief of Hartsock. Pitched very well. Wolfram, one hop liner. Scooped up by the second baseman. Ryan Marks throws over to first base in time to get Wolfram. Nice play by the second baseman. Second out of the inning there. Balls are 45 pitches, 24 strikes. He's worked. Two and two-thirds innings, he's allowed two hits, one run. That was unearned. <laughs> Struck out one and walked one. Stepping in, the Rams' number nine hitter, center fielder, Grady Gusweiler. First pitch to Grady as a ball. Grady 0 for 3. Drills this one to center field. In comes nice play by Eli Delgado. Delgado says, I saw your catch at Clyda. Look at this one. So Gus Weiler has a hit stolen from him by the center fielder. Nice play, Eli Delgado to retire. Gus Weiler. Rams go quickly in the top of the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. For just a second time, the Rams do not leave anybody on. To the bottom of the seventh we go. Here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, it is Tenora six and Wasion three. 
Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. To the bottom of the seventh we go. For the Wauseon Indians, two, three, and four. Two face, Mason McQuillan, Delgado, Rodriguez, and Clymer. What a heck of a play by Eli Delgado to end the top of the seventh. As we said, Gus Weiler does a fantastic job stealing hits away from the opponent. And Grady, unfortunately, was on the other end of that. As Delgado came racing in, made a diving catch to steal a hit away from Grady Gusweiler. Delgado steps in, singled, had an RBI in the first, flew out in the third, walked and scored in the fifth. Bro, she thought she was slick and tried to launch me. I did. McQuillan winds it up. First pitch to Delgato is a little bit high. <laughs> One ball and no strikes to the Indians center fielder. That's when you fell. That's the one time you fell over in, like, in the neighbor's yard. The tree. There was a big McQuillan's 1-0. Fouled off first base side. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Kind of like hunting for golf balls over here at Wauseon on the first base side. <laughs> if you get them before they're waterlogged, you just give them back to coach. Thomas. 1-1 one, one pitch to Delgado. Drills it to center field. Gus Weiler cruises over into right center. Puts it away for out number one. Eli Delgado is the first out here in the seventh. Tyson Rodriguez steps in. Rodriguez walked in the first, walked in the fifth. Delgado, or Tyson Rodriguez, my apologies, Tyson Rodriguez steps in. That's from the right side. Rodriguez officially, 0 for 1, has two walks. First pitch is a ball. Quillen gets the sign. I'm getting the four ranger. Long look in. 1 0 pitch to Tyson Rodriguez. Breaking ball. Strike call. Count even. One ball, one strike, one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Rams lead 6 3. Bases empty. McQuillan. Trying to get the save. Great job of release thus far. I thought I was a girl. 1 1 pitch. Tried to overthrow that one. Bit outside. Two balls and a strike. No action in the Rams' bullpen. Wolfram was warming up last inning. Connor, that is. Caden Kleiner on deck for the Indians. McCullough nods. Winds it up. 2-1. Strike. Two called. Count to Tyson Rodriguez. Two balls and two strikes. broke her she was crying. Six, five, and two for Tenora. Three, four, and six for Wasian. It was not fun. I saw her and I was laughing. Two, two pitch from McQuillan. Strike three call on the outside corner. Down goes Tyson Rodriguez. Rodriguez caught looking for out number two. Day two. Coming up, we will have the Bidlack Insurance and Investments Player of the Game Award. And the Rams win. We'll have the Higme Embroidery Player of the Game. Okay. Jaden Clymer steps in, struck out in the first, grounded to short in the third, singled in the fifth. McQuillan's first pitch, way outside to the backstop it goes. One ball and no strikes. Very nice facility over here at Wauseon. All grass, nice manicured infield, and outfields in great shape. All taken care of. Kind of like all their facilities over here. Football field is fantastic. Inside leads back climber. 
two balls and no strikes. Football field is one of the best ones in the area. McQuillan's 2-0 coming to Clymer. Winds it up. Come set inside ball three. 6-3 Rams lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Against who? Two outs. Nobody on. 3-0 count to Caden Clymer. Ryan Marks is on deck. McQuillan winds it. Check swing strike. To Clymer. Yeah, that's Thursday, you monkey. <laughs> Quillen comes set. A 3 1 pitch coming. Check swing, stays high. Ball four. Down the first base goes Caden Clymer with a two out walk. We're up Ryan Marks. Marks steps in. Two walks for Marks. One official at bat. That was a pop out to Eli Plasman at second. So Marks steps in. Xavier Martinez, a pinch runner at first base. Marks, last hope for the Indians. They trail 6-3. Two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. McQuillan works out of the set position. Gets the sign. First pitch coming to Marks. Swung on. High fly ball. Shallow right field. Gus Weiler comes in. Harris comes in. Makes a leaping catch for out number three. Nice play. Luke Harris came flying out of nowhere. Well. <laughs> to get the final out to retire Ryan Marks in the inning for the Indians. None of my videos. While Sian got a runner on, no runs for the Indians, no hits, no ram errors, one left. Final from Wasian Tenora six, Wasian three. Stay tuned. Coming up, we will have the post game show by Bidlack Insurance and Investments. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back at Wauseon High School, Rams improved to 15-4. and four. With a 6-3 win over the Indians of Wauseon. Wauseon falls to 7-10-1. and one. Said Wauseon will play Defiance on May 19th in the first round of the OHSA sectionals. Rams got her started with four runs in the first inning. Those were all unearned runs. Came back with a single run in the third. And another single run in the sixth for their six runs. Six runs, five hits, and two errors for the Tenor Rams. For Wauseon, they scored a single run in the first inning and a single run in the fourth and another single run in the fifth. Three runs, four hits, and six errors for the Indians. And in the first inning, two huge errors for the Indians had a big uh, playing of those four runs for Tenora. So final from Wasian Rams 6 and Wasian 3. Stay tuned coming up. We're going to have your Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award. And we're going to do that right after this time out. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. 
Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Back here at Wauseon High School, Rams come away with a 6-3 victory over the host, the Wauseon Indians. Welcome to the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award. Higby Embroidery Player of the Game tonight, we're going to give to Mason McQuillan. Mason came on in relief of Caden Radzik, pitched three in the third very effective innings of relief, came into minor trouble where Connor Wolfram was warming up in the six. Mason got out of it. So for McQuillan, three in the third innings, two hits, one run, one earned run, struck out one, and walked three. Through 56 pitches, 32 of those were strikes. So very effective three in the third innings for sophomore righty Mason McQuillan, who is your Higby Embroidery player of the game. So congratulations to Mason. Thanks, everybody, for listening and watching. Said we'll try and upload the video tonight. Sometimes it uploads within a couple hours. Other times it uploads within six hours. You can watch that later on YouTube if you do not catch it on Facebook Live. The YouTube video usually uploads in 780 or 1080 HD. It's much, much better to watch on YouTube. For whatever reason, Facebook just doesn't upload HD very well anymore. But thanks to our sponsors, BSN Sports, Weber Bookkeeping, Maumee Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza and a Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Performance Fitness, Drop Zone Pizzeria, Higby Embroidery, Signs Excavating, Firestone Tavern, Oklahoma Tavern, Northwest Ohio Sports, Bat and Stevens Body Shop, Tenora Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon, Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Midlack Insurance and Financial Services, Wiener Hill Weber and Stanley Attorneys at Law, Postum Insurance and Investments, and finally, Mayfield Engineer Company. Get your Mac career starter today. Go to MacCareers.com. They have a $1,000 sign-on bonus. So again, final... Ram 6 and Wasion 3 your Higby Embroidery player of the game goes to Mason McQuillan and we'll see you guys Thursday, Friday and Saturday Rams with three straight home games so have a good night everybody and enjoy your Tuesday night Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action. And follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio.